Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on compute with scientific notation. Multiplication and division with scientific notation is where we're going to start today. You can use the product of powers and quotient of powers properties to multiply and divide numbers in scientific notation. Our first guided example asks us to evaluate 7 and 2 tenths times 10 to the third times 1 and 6 tenths times 10 to the fourth. Express the result in scientific notation. So we have this written out here, and we're going to be using the commutative and associative properties in order to help us here. Now, what we did is we took 7 and 2 tenths and 1 and 6 tenths and regrouped these here. 7 and 2 tenths times 1 and 6 tenths. Then we took times 10 to the third and times 10 to the fourth and regroup those here. These are just, in a way, four numbers being multiplied by each other. And we can reorder and regroup those. And so 7 and 2 tenths times 1 and 6 tenths is 11 and 52 hundredths. And then times our 10 to the third times 10 to the fourth. Now we can use our product of powers rules, 10 to the third times 10 to the fourth, by adding our 3 plus 4 to get an somewhat of an answer of 11.52 times 10 to the seventh. Now, that number there is not in scientific notation. Even though it looks like it kind of is, it's not. And so what we need to do is to write it in to scientific notation. And here's how we can do this. We see that our answer is 1.152 times 10 to the 8th, but how do we get there? And, and if you just notice that 11.52 magically becomes 1.152 and 10 to the 7th becomes 10 to the 8th and that's it, well, great, that's what's different, but how do we get there? Let's start off by rewriting this 11.52 times 10 to the 7th. In order to get this into scientific notation, this 11.52 we need to have as 1.152 times 10 to something. Now remember, when you write a number in scientific notation, this number out here on the left side of the decimal point has to be between 1 and less than 10. So greater than 1, but less than 10, or greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10, but either way. When you look, how do we get from 11.52 to 1.152? We move the decimal point back 1 to the left. And when we do that, we're getting smaller. Now, we want to be able to write the same number. And we got smaller by one spot. Well, each spot is a factor of 10. And so if we got smaller by a factor of 10, here we're going to need to get bigger by a factor of 10. So we're going to go from 7 to 8. That balances out. We go one spot to the left with 11.5. 5.2 to 1.152, and so we need to get bigger from 7 to 8. We'll be practicing this much more in this lesson today. So let's move on to our got it questions to see if we can solve these. We have our 8.4 times 10 to the second multiplied by 2.5 times 10 to the sixth. Well, the first thing we're going to do here is to regroup these. So we're going to have our numbers 8.4 and then times 2.5. We're going to take these numbers and multiply them together. And then we'll take our times 10 to those and multiply those together. 10 to the second times 10 to the, I know I just covered it up there, but sixth. 
8 and 4 tenths multiplied by 2 and 5 tenths is 21. And then for the 10 squared times 10 to the 6th, power times a power, we're going to add the exponents. So this will be 10 to the 2 plus 6, 8. Now again, don't be fooled into thinking that this is scientific notation. It's not yet. Now if we rewrite this as 21 times 10 to the 8th, we know we need to get this looking more like 2.1 times 10 to something. Now with our 21, our decimal point is currently right here. We're getting back to the left, one spot. And since we're moving smaller by one spot, we need to get bigger by one spot or a factor of 10. And so this is going to become 10 to the ninth as we just added one. So again, with the 21 to the 2.1, we got one spot smaller so to balance that, we need to get one bigger with our exponents. So our answer here is 2 and 1 tenth times 10 to the ninth. Example B is not quite as much fun as this one. So we're going to just take our 2.63 and our 1 and 2 tenths, and multiply those in a group together. So 2.63, or 2 and 63 hundredths, and then times the 1 and 2 tenths. And then we'll take our 10 to the fourth, and our 10 to the negative third. And so 10 to the fourth times 10 to the negative third. Well, 2.63 or 2 and 63 hundredths times 1 and 2 tenths is 3 and 156 thousandths. And then times 10 to the power times the power, we're going to add 4 plus the negative 3. Well, 4 plus negative 3 is just 1. Are we in scientific notation? Well, this number to the left of the decimal point is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10, so we don't need to move anything. We're actually already done. So this is 3.156 times 10 to the first. Keep that first exponent as we're talking about scientific notation here. So sometimes when you multiply the 2.63 and the 1.2, you'll get an answer where you don't have to move the decimal point. However, sometimes you'll get something like 21 times 10 to the 8th where you do need to move the decimal point. And so if you do need to move the decimal point, ask yourself, how do I get this number into a scientific notation form? I moved one spot smaller, so I need to get one spot bigger to counteract. If you were to move this number bigger, then you would need to make this number smaller. Let's move on to guided example two. In 2010, the world population was about 6,860,000,000. The population of the United States was about 3 times 10 to the 8th. About how many times larger is the world population than the population of the United States. Well, this gets us into our division with scientific notation. What they decided to do was to estimate the population of the world and write in scientific notation. So they made their 6,860,000,000 into 7 trillion. Now, taking 7 trillion from standard form to scientific notation is 7 times 10 to the 9th. And then they set up a division problem. 7 times 10 to the 9th divided by 
3 times 10 to the 8th will tell how many times larger the world population is than the United States. Well, similar to our multiplication, what we're going to do is look at our 7 and our 3 and divide, and then divide our 10 to the 9th by the 10 to the 8th. Well, 7 divided by 3 was about 2.3 repeating, so they just cut that off at 2.3, rounding to the nearest tenth. For 10 to the 9th divided by 10 to the 8th, power divided by a power means you're going to subtract 9 minus 8 to get 1. So it conveniently works out that this is 2.3 times 10 to the 1st. Now, to get that number back into standard form is what they did. So the population of the world is about 23 times larger than the population of the United States. Now it's our turn to see if we've truly got it. The surface area of Lake Superior, the largest of the Great Lakes, is 8 times 10 to the 4th square kilometers. The surface of the smallest Great Lake, Ontario, is 18,160 square kilometers. About how many times as great is the area covered by Lake Superior than Lake Ontario? Our surface area of Lake Superior is already into scientific notation. So what we're going to do is take our 18,160 and write this in to scientific notation. Well, before we do that, we are allowed to round this, and we're going to round this as just 18,000. Well, getting 18,000 into scientific notation, this is going to be 1.8 times 10 and to the, our decimal points here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, this is going to be times 10 to the 4th. And so as we come up into our work area, now that we have that into scientific notation, we're going to set up a division problem. And our division problem is going to be 8 times 10 to the 4th divided by 1.8 times 10 to the 4th. Now to solve this, let's take our 8 and our 1.8 and divide those, and we will take our 10 to the 4th and 10 to the 4th and divide those. Eight divided by 1.8 is about 4.4 with that 4 repeating, and this will be times 10 to the well, 4 minus 4, when we do our subtraction there, is 0. And if you remember, any number to the 0 power is 1. So this is really just 4.4 times 1. Yeah, 0 exponents make that number 1, so it's just 4.4 times 1, so we're just going to say about 4.4 4 times larger for our answer. Now I'd like to take a look at just one more example of division before we move on to our addition and subtraction. The example is 1.984, or 1 in 984 thousandths, times 10 to the 6th, divided by 6.2 times 10 to the 4th. So if we kind of just separate these out to start, we'll have our 1.984, or 1 in 984 thousandths, 
divided by 6 and 2 tenths. And that will, in the end, be multiplied by 10 to the 6th over 10 to the 4th. Well, 1 and 984 thousandths divided by 6 and 2 tenths is 0 0.32, or just 32 hundredths, times 10 to the, well, 6 minus 4 gets us 2. Now this number, 0 0.32 times 10 to the second, is not yet written in scientific notation. So what we need to do is to write it in scientific notation. That's going to be 3.2 times 10 to some power. Well, how do we get from 0 0.32 to 3.2? we need to move this decimal one spot to the right. In doing so, from 0 0.32 to 3.2, I made this bigger by one spot, or by one factor of 10, which means to counteract that from 10 to the second down to here, I need to get smaller by a factor of 10. Well, that's just going to be 10 to the first. So I move my decimal point one time to get this into scientific notation. My result was bigger. And so to balance that, since I moved it one time and got bigger, I need to reduce this exponent by one. So my final answer here is 3.2 times 10 to the first. Now as we start the second part of our lesson, addition and subtraction with scientific notation. And we'll read, when adding or subtracting decimals in standard form, it is necessary to line up the place values. In scientific notation, the place value is represented by the exponent. Before adding or subtracting, both numbers must be expressed in the same form. So with guided example three, evaluate each expression, express the result in scientific notation. We have 6.89 times 10 to the fourth plus 9.24 times 10 to the 5th. Well, times 10 to the 4th, times 10 to the 5th, our place value, that's not lined up. We're either going to make this 10 to the 4th, 10 to the 5th, or we can make the 10 to the 5th, a 10 to the 4th. What they decided to do in this example was to make this 10 to the 5th into a 10 to the 4th. And so if I just kind of find a little bit of room here to write this out, this is 9.24 times 10 to the fifth. And we're going to make this times 10 to the fourth. Well, from 5 to 4, we got smaller by 1. And so what we're going to need to do to this number is make it larger by moving the decimal point over once. So that's why that became 92.4 as we got larger by moving it over once. So they substituted in the 92.4 times 10 to the fourth here. And once we have the same place value, once we have the 10 to the fourth, your job's pretty much over. We add the 6 and 89 hundredths to the 92.4 to get 99.29 times 10 to the fourth. Now, Again, just like with our multiplication and division, this is not in scientific notation yet. What we need to do is to make this 9.929, and since we got one place smaller, we need to make our 10 to the fourth one bigger, so back to 10 to the fifth. So that's our final answer there. What about one with subtraction? 
7.83 times 10 to the 8th minus 11,610,000. Well, a little bit of a challenge here because we first need to take this 11,610,000 and rewrite it in scientific notation, which is 1.161 times 10 to the 7th. Well, we have 10 to the 8th, and we have 10 to the 7th. So we either need to make the 8 a 7 or a 7 an 8. They took the 8 and made it a 7. Again, if we just take a quick moment to look at how they did this, we were at 7.83 times 10 to the 8th. We determined to take this down to 10 to the 7th. From 8 to 7, we moved down one number. So we're going to need to make this bigger by one number, which was 78.3 times 10 to the 7th. And sure enough, that's what they have there, 78.3 times 10 to the 7th. And now that we have the same times 10 to the 7th, we can subtract 78.3 minus 1.161, or more mathematically speaking, 78 and 3 tenths minus 1 and 161 thousandths. That is 77 and 139 thousandths times 10 to the 7th. And again, this is not yet in scientific notation. And so we need to make this 7.7139, or 7 and 7,139 thousandths. No, 7 and 7, no, 7 and 7,139 ten thousandths. You guys have been looking for bloopers for a while, so there's one. We made the 77 smaller by one factor, so we need to make our 7 bigger to balance it out. And we do have one more guided example involving addition, where we have to change the 593,000 into scientific notation, get the 10 to the 5th to be 10 to the 6th, add, and you're kind of there at the end. But instead of talking about these, let's get our hands dirty and do some of these. Now, I'm not sure where, if you're following along in this book, you're going to show the work for this. So you may want to take this down on a sheet of notebook paper, because I'm going to be zooming way in here just to have some space. Our first question is 8.41 times 10 to the third plus 9.71 times 10 to the fourth. So for this example, we either need to take our 10 to the third and make it 10 to the fourth or the 10 to the fourth and make it 10 to the third. And to be quite honest, the one you choose doesn't really matter. You'll get the same answer no matter what. What I'm going to choose to do for this example is to take this 8.41 times 10 to the third and make it times 10 to the fourth. Now I'll rewrite this right side, 9.71 times 10 to the fourth. Well, if we're going from 10 to the third to 10 to the fourth, that again got larger by one. So from 8.41 to whatever we're going to write here, we need to get smaller by a place. So that's going to slide our decimal back and make this 0. 0.8. Four, one times 10 to the 4th. Now that I have 10 to the 4th and 10 to the 4th, I can add this new 0 0.841 plus the 9.71, and that's going to be times 10 to the 4th. After adding these numbers together, the sum is 10 and 551 thousandths times 10 to the fourth. 
Well, unfortunately, this number is not yet in scientific notation. And so we're going to need to rewrite this as 1.0551 times 10 to the, well, we moved the decimal point back 1, which made that smaller. So we're going to need from the 4 down here to make it larger. And again, we moved our decimal point over once here. And so we're going to increase the 4 one time to a 5. So our answer for part A here, or part D, excuse me, 1.0551 times 10 to the fifth. So our keys, we have to make sure we're adding with the same 10 to the add, and then make sure your answer is in scientific notation. Let's continue on to example E. Example E is 1.263 or 1 and 263 thousandths times 10 to the ninth. Subtracted is 1 and 525 thousandths times 10 to the seventh. Now we either need to make this 10 to the 9th a 10 to the 7th, or this 10 to the 7th a 10 to the 9th. Well, I'm going to pick the one on the right this time. You pick the one on the left the first time, I'll pick the one on the right this time. It, again, you can tell it doesn't really significantly matter which you choose. This time we'll keep the times 10 to the 9th, and we'll then subtract We'll change this 10 to the 7th into a 10 to the 9th. Now, we made this 7 to a 9 larger by 2, which means we need to make this 1 and 525 thousandths smaller. And what we're actually going to do is make it smaller by moving it twice, with it being the decimal point. And so what this is now is point zero one five two five. And to recap so far, 7 to 9 was larger by 2, so we had to move our decimal place over to the left twice, to balance it out, to make that smaller by two factors, or two decimal spots, two factors of 10. Well now, we can take our 1.263 and subtract our 0 0.01525, and that's going to be multiplied by our 10 to the 9th. After subtracting, we get the difference of 1 and 24,775 hundred thousandths times 10 to the ninth. And this number is already in scientific notation, so we don't need to make any more changes to that answer. Let's continue on to our last example, example F. Example F is 6 and 3 tenths times 10 to the fifth plus 2,700,000. Let's go ahead and write this 2,700,000 into scientific notation. 
So we have our 6 and 3 tenths times 10 to the 5th plus, well, our decimal point is going from where it is in red to right here in blue. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spots. So we're going to rewrite it as 2.7 times 10 to the positive 6. Well, we have a power to the 5th and a power to the 6th. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo catch up. We'll choose the 2.7 times 10 to the 6th and make that times 10 to the 5th. Just again, as you can tell, sometimes it does not matter which one you choose to change. Just change one of them. So I'm going to change this to a 10 to the 5th. Well, from 6 to 5, we got smaller by 1. So, as I rewrite this 2.7, I need to get bigger. And that's going to be 27, since I moved my decimal point over one spot. So again, it's all about balancing this out. From 6 to 5, I got smaller by one spot. So I need to move my 2.7 bigger by one spot into a 27. Now that I have both, as 10 to the 5th, I can rewrite this as 6.3, or 6 and 3 tenths, plus 27, and that's going to be times 10 to the 5th. Well, 6 and 3 tenths plus 27 is 33 and 3 tenths times 10 to the 5th. Well, that's not quite scientific notation, now is it? This needs to become 3.33 times 10 to the something. What is that something? Well, for one last time here, we moved from 33 to 3, so we got smaller by one place. So from 10 to the 5th to 10 to the, we need to get bigger by one spot, which is a 6. So our answer here is 3.33 times 10 to the 6th power. So as we wrap up this lesson on computation with scientific notation, you can tell, especially with the addition and subtraction, there is a fine level of detail involved. And even with the multiplication and division, there's detail involved there as well. But that is it for this lesson on computation with scientific notation. Stay detailed, stay focused, and you'll do great. Good luck.